friends, welcome back to Rouse Rising. My name is Katie and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my top 10 items that I keep in my prepper pantry. This video is also a collaboration with Felicia from Grains and Grit. She teaches all about real whole grains from a biblical perspective using freshly milled wheat and more. You definitely want to go check out her channel because right now she has an amazing course that she is offering on how to master prepping with grains. In addition to that, her channel is loaded with recipes and all kinds of antidotes for gathering, prepping, storing, and using grains. Felicia is going to be sharing with you today the top 10 grains that she recommends keeping in your prepper pantry. You don't want to miss out on that, so once you get to the end of this video, head on over to her channel and check out the video over there. I'm going to try to keep this short and to the point with each one of these ingredients because we all know that we could go on and on and on for days for the uses of some of these items. I want you to leave down in the comments below, what are your recommended uses for these items? I love to hear the variety of ideas and uses that everybody has. The first thing I'm gonna go over right now is sugar. Now, there's gonna be some discussion, I'm sure, down in the comments, whether sugar or honey or molasses, what are you gonna keep in your home? What is gonna be a sweetener of choice that you have? And are you gonna be able to ration your sugar enough to make that special cake for your family on Sunday? Sunday. I don't know. Are you prepared? So this video along with uh, Felicia over at Greens and Grit, we're both here to help you get your pantries stocked and prepped because hard times are coming folks and right now we all need to be doing what we can to get ready. She's going to prepare you with all the grains and legumes and things like that that you need to stock your pantry with so that you can serve your family a variety of meals. Those products are going to last in your pantry for years on end. That is why they are the perfect things to stock. And then I'm going to be telling you about the different ingredients that can accompany her list of grains that are going to help you make a cohesive a delicious meal for your family. So the debate back to honey and sugar. Are you going to go with honey? Are you going to go with sugar? Well, there's a variety of uses for both. Honey is of course medicinal. So if you can have honey and you can have sugar, by all means have both. With sugar, you can have organic cane sugar or cane sugar. You want to be sure that it is cane sugar and not a corn sugar or a beet sugar or some kind of other GMO sugar. You want to make sure that you are getting a cane sugar and with your sugar you can put it in a high speed blender and make powdered sugar. You can also mix it with molasses and make a brown sugar and then there you are covered for all of your baking needs. I know a lot of people don't want to have sugar in their homes so maybe you are resorting to honey. I know molasses has a high mineral content as well as blackstrap molasses has a lot of iron in it. So if those are options for you for sweeteners that you want to have in your home, use those sweeteners. Sugar can be used for everything from removing grass stains from your clothing. Medicinally, it has its purposes. I know some of those things might be wives tales. Some of those might be outdated purposes. It helps the medicine go down. If you're having to take a bitter tincture or a tincture that is just way too strong, if you're trying to give one of those to your children, you can mix it in with a bit of sugar or honey, and that is going to help that medicine go down. Also, sugar is an excellent preservative. You're going to want this for your jellies and jams if you want to keep them on your shelf for long periods of time. If you want a water bath can, fruits, um, then you're going to want to have sugar to help preserve those for longer periods. So sugar has its place in the kitchen. It has its place in the prepper pantry for food preservation as well. When times get really, really hard, sugar and sweeteners can uplift your mood. So it's great to have sugar on hand so that if you're eating bland meals all week, you can look forward to that Sunday cake. We talked about honey and honey and all of its amazing medicinal properties. You can also use honey in fermenting as well. You can use your sugar in fermenting. I have used honey to ferment garlic cloves before and it works amazing to make a medicine with your garlic. I've also used honey to make elixirs and things like that. So I'm gonna link those recipes down below. I use honey every single day in my nightly cup of tea. I love honey. And if you are using raw local honey, you are gonna get the most benefits from that. 
the next item that you were going to want to keep in your house is coconut oil. If you are a holistic mama or a holistic family like us, then you have been using coconut oil for years. You already know all of the many antibacterial, antimicrobial benefits of coconut oil. I keep it on hand and I have used it for years in our cooking and baking because when I have a baby under one years old, typically I am 100% dairy free and coconut oil has served me so well to fill in the gaps for fat in my diet. And I've used it in place of butter. I have used it in baking. I have used it in so many anecdotes for healing, whether it's a skin issue, a diaper rash issue, a little bit of irritation. Uh, there are lots of uses for it. We use it in a lot of chocolate making and energy bar making. All of these prepper pantry items are going to be linked down in this video's description and you're going to be able to just click on those and order them if you need to or you can go to your local stores and hopefully find them. Hopefully they are still in stock. But coconut oil is one that I definitely recommend because you can use this in the making of salves and so many things. You can use it on a squeaky door hinge. The possibilities are endless for coconut oil. Another reason why we keep coconut oil around is because it improves brain function. Our brains need lots of fat and so I put coconut oil in our oatmeal, I put it in a lot of our baked goods, I put it in my bread sometimes. So we really want to make sure that we are giving our brains and our bodies the best fats and nutrition that we can. So coconut oil is a high uh, nutritional value fat that you can have in your diet. It's great for vegans and it's great for carnivores alike. So baking powder can also be used as an antacid. It can be used to freshen your breath, to freshen your armpits. You can use it as a powerful drain cleaner. It is non-toxic. It's safe to have around your home. It's safe enough to eat. So you want to get some baking soda because when stuff hits the fan, you're going to want to use this for a variety of purposes. So I highly recommend stocking up on your baking soda, get a couple bags of it, get a couple boxes of it, and rest assured that you have a remedy at hand as well as the leavening agent to make your bread or your cakes or your pancakes. Real salt. Are you eating real salt? I know a few years back I found out about all of the different pink sea salts, all of the gray sea salts, all of the different salts that are available on the market and I have been trying to source products from the USA. This salt is actually mined in Utah from an ancient sea salt bed that is underground. It is incredible in its mineral content as well as its medicinal uses. You can use it as a gargle for your throat if you have a sore throat, if you have abscesses or ulcers in your mouth, that sort of thing. It's going to help cleanse those. You can use salt as an antiseptic as well as real salt is great for balancing your electrolytes. You can use this in a drink mix such as with coconut water and some lemon to make a homemade Gatorade electrolyte drink. So salt is one of those things that you can really use a lot of. You can use salt in food preservation. So if you are harvesting meat and you don't have refrigeration of any sort, there are different ways that you can cure meats with salt. So down in the description box below this video, I'm going to link you guys with a code that is going to give you 10% off of this Redmond's Real Salt that is USA mined and made. If you spend over $30 on their website, you get free shipping. I order this product directly from the, the manufacturer because I get the best deal on it and I can extend that deal to you guys. So check it out in the video's description below. Wheat berries, I think, are one of the most important things that you can keep in your prepper pantry because when things hit the fan and should our food supplies be disrupted any further, you're going to be able to grow your own wheat with these wheat berries as well as you can cook them like a barley or anything else and you can use them as a textured type uh, addition to meals, soups, stews, different things like that, as well as you can mill this into fresh flour and bake your daily bread. There are a variety of reasons why you want to keep wheat berries. You can grow your own wheat from this, you can mill your own flour, and you can use it in a variety of cooking and baking applications. All right, the next item that I'm going to talk on that you want to make sure that you are stocking up in your prepper pantry is you want to have a variety of meats that are canned for long-term food storage as well as broths. 
These are things that are gonna give depth of flavor to your meals and are gonna sustain your family. Like I realized that eating meat was imperative for me and my vitality and my health and wellness as well as eating things like organ meats and meats that we harvest from the forest that are all natural and are organic. Those things are gonna nourish us the most. I encourage you if you don't harvest your own meat and if you don't have access to fresh meat to can yourself or you don't wanna do that, that every week that you are grabbing and putting away a little bit of protein in cans, whether that's beans or meat, but I'm gonna recommend a few different things that I have on my shelves that give us variety. This wild caught salmon is a great option to have. Here we have some canned organic chicken. This is going up in price, but I've been able to find it for about $3.50 to $3.99 per can where I am locally. So I've been stocking up on that chicken. And then you want to find some really good uh, wild caught sardines. We eat them whole with the bones and everything in it. There is so much nutrition in sardines. So make sure that you are stocking a variety of proteins in your prepper pantry because those are things that are really going to sustain you and you can eat them a few times a week. You'll be able to incorporate proteins into your, uh, your grain dominated meals and you are going to be able to stretch your meals a lot farther. So we want to be sure that we're getting plenty of fat and protein into our prepper pantries by any means necessary so that we can be well sustained. I've got two things here. I've got rice and I have oatmeal. So I have a big container of both of these. My oatmeal container is empty. And if you guys watch my pantry restocking video, I explain all about why I let my jars go empty. But oatmeal you can use as a breakfast food. You can use it to stretch a meatloaf. You can use it to in baking, to bake cookies, and all sorts of things. So oats are really, really versatile. If you're able to, and if you have a way to flake your own oats, what you really wanna do is get the whole groats, the whole grain oat in its whole form, and then you can grind it and mill it. It's best to buy your foods in their whole form because that's gonna maintain the nutritional value the longest. And I also have rice here. Rice is going to be one of those things that you can cook in broth and stretch every meal in your pre prepper pantry as well. You're going to be able to use rice to dry out your electronics. Things like if you drop your phone in the toilet you can, or in a river, you can throw your phone in a bag, in a Ziploc bag or whatever with some rice. And the rice is going to draw out all that moisture. So it's just a little tip, just something that you can have on the side. And rice lasts a really, really long time. And we have a couple of 50 pound bags of rice down here in our prepper pantry that we keep in stock because we know if we need to live off of something, this takes up a little bit of space. And when you add water to it, it expands and it's going to fill your bellies a lot more and fill, feed the bellies of your family a lot more. Okay, the very last thing that I want to touch on is apple cider vinegar or any of your vinegars that you have. Apple cider vinegar has so many uses from cleaning burnt pots and pans to killing fruit flies if you have a fruit fly infestation. You can use apple cider vinegar as a hair rinse to rinse all the buildup and gunk out of your hair. It's also going to leave your hair beautiful and shiny. You're going to want to use your apple cider vinegar and your baking soda to unclog drains as well as you can use apple cider vinegar medicinally on bug bites or itchy wounds that you have encountered in your exploring time. <laughs> Apple cider vinegar is an excellent meat marinade. You can also use it in pickling. You can use it in a liver cleansing tonic. You can use it in a foot soak. This is a product that you do not want to go without. Make sure that you are buying your vinegar by the gallon. You can use it for herbs and different things like that to make a vinegar based tincture. So there's a lot of ways that you can use apple cider vinegar in your home. Medicinally, you definitely want this to be one of your top items in your prepper pantry. Go ahead and get a couple gallons and, you know, keep them in rotation. You always want to be rotating your food first in, first out. The whole point of this video and Felicia's video over there at Greens and Grit is to encourage you all to go out and start prepping. Start small, start 
getting a few items here and there and we should all have our little nest egg of food built up. We should be stocking weekly or monthly as we can the items that we need. What do you want to focus on? Well, you want to focus on food, shelter, water, medicine, security. Those are the top five things that you should be preparing for for the future should anything happen down the road. Are you ready? Do you have those items covered? Is your pantry prepped? Is your house ready? Is your garden ready? Are you doing anything you can by any means necessary to be ready? We're here to help you do that. Check out Grains and Grit, her Prepping with Grains course. That is going to give you all the tools that you need to feel empowered and prepared. I want to thank you all so much for watching today. Until next time, click that subscribe button. Give this video a like. That's a thumbs up. And click the notification bell. That way you are up to date with all of the latest from Rouse Rising. Thank you so much for watching today. Until next time, bye.